Hey there, Mr. Sutton here with the AB Calculus 311 Extra Practice Number 1 Solutions on Derivatives of Logarithmic Functions. For this weird problem, we've got uh, y equaling the tan of u, u equaling v minus 1 over v, and v equaling ln of x. We want the derivative dy over dx at x equals e. So our first task here is actually just to write the original function in terms of x and y, since that's what our derivative is involving here. Um, so I can start by writing y as the tan of v minus 1 over v, which I'm actually going to write as v minus v to the negative 1, um, just so I can use my power rule later on. But now I can't stop with v. I have to actually replace v with something with an x. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals tan of ln of x minus ln of x to the negative 1. And now that I have everything in terms of x and y, I can go ahead and take the derivative with respect to uh, with y here. All right, so we've got a chain rule going on. Derivative of the outer function, derivative of tan of something, that's going to be secant squared of something, in this case ln of x minus ln of x to the negative 1, times the derivative of the stuff inside here. So going from left to right, derivative of ln of x is going to be 1 over x. And this next term here, I'm going to use my power rule. Um, so that's going to be plus ln of x to the negative 2. But now I still need to multiply by the derivative of ln of x itself. We have an inner function of ln of x here. And that, again, is 1 over x. So this is what we're eventually going to be plugging e into. So let's go ahead and do that. Derivative when x equals e, uh, that's going to be secant squared of ln of e minus ln of e to the negative 1. So I'm going to write that as 1 over the ln of e, just to make it a little bit easier to look at here. Over here, we've got 1 over e, and this is going to be 1 over or ln. This is going to be actually a ln of e, 1 over that, and it's being squared, 1 over ln of e squared times 1 over e. All right, so now that we've rewritten this in a form that's a little bit easier to deal with, ln of v we know is just 1. This is minus 1 over 1, so this is actually 0, secant squared of 0 for that first factor. Over here, this is going to be 1 over e plus, uh, well, let's see here. Again, we said ln of e is 1, so this is really 1 over 1 squared times 1 over e. Uh, so this is 1 over e plus 1 over e which is going to be 2 over e if we add the numerators and keep that denominator the same. What's the secant squared of 0? Well, secant of 0 is 1 over cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so this is 1 over 1 squared, which is all just 1. Multiply that by 2 over e, you still have 2 over e, so that ends up being answer choice d. On this problem, they want the slope of the line tangent to ln of x squared at x equals e squared. So we need to first take the derivative of this y function and then plug e squared into it. To make our lives a little bit easier, I'm just going to use my pop-out rule to pop this exponent of 2 out in front of the log. And now that's a much quicker derivative to take. Uh, y prime here is just going to be 2 over x. And now y prime of e squared is just going to be 2 over e squared which ends up giving us answer choice B. For this problem, uh, this looks like it shouldn't take a whole lot of time, but it actually is, is a little bit involved of a problem. We're given this f of x function, and we want f double prime of radical e. So let's start by taking the first and then the second derivative of uh, the f function here, and then we'll plug radical e into it. So for the first derivative, f prime, we just have to use the power rule along with a little chain rule on this ln of x term. So we have something squared. Derivative of that is going to be 2 times the something to the first power. So 2 ln of x. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the something, derivative of ln of x. So that's 1 over x we're multiplying by. That was f prime. f double prime, we need to take the derivative of a product here. Or you could do a derivative of a quotient, I guess. Um, it depends on whether you want to think of this as 2 ln of x times x to the negative 1 or 2 ln of x divided by x. If I'm being honest, I would much rather use the product rule than the quotient rule. Um, so I'm going to use u prime v plus uv prime. And then in my box for my uh, two factors, I've got 
2 ln of x, and I'm going to rewrite this second one as x to the negative 1, just to make it a little bit easier to differentiate. Okay, so derivative of 2 ln of x, that's going to be 1, or actually 2 over x. And this next derivative here, this is going to be negative x to the negative 2. Let me use the ribbon to, well actually before I multiply all this out, um, let me just go ahead and plug in radical e inside the box, and then I'll put it back together out here. So if x equals the square root of e, what does that give us for our four parts here? So the ln of square root of e, um, that's just saying, what do I have to raise e to to get the square root of e? Well, that's 1 half, but we have a 2 out in front, so this is 2 times 1 half, which is just 1. And then we have radical e to the negative 1, so that's actually 1 over the square root of e. Down here, we have 2 over radical e. And for this last one, this is going to be negative 1 over radical e squared. But if you square radical e, you just get e. So this is actually just negative 1 over e. All right, let's use the ribbon to put all this back together. And I'm going to simplify as I go, because I'm going to have to for this problem anyway. So I have 2 radical e times 1 over radical e, so 2 over radical e, actually. So just multiplying straight across, we have a 2 in the numerator. Radical e times itself is just e. Uh, so we just have 2 over e for that u prime v term when we multiply it out and simplify. For u v prime, coming the other way here, I have minus 1 over e. Well, 2 over e minus 1 over e, we have a common denominator. So just subtracting our numerators, we just have 1 over e. And that ends up being answer choice A. For this problem, we want the slope of the line tangent to ln of 1 minus x at x equals negative 1. So let's first take the derivative of this. Uh, so this is derivative of ln of something. That's going to be 1 over the something, 1 over 1 minus x. But now we have to take the derivative of the something. The derivative of 1 minus x is actually negative 1. So we have a tail of negative 1 that we want to make sure we include. So then if I plug x equals negative 1 in here, I've got this whole fraction is negative, so I have negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1. So this is going to be negative 1 over 2, negative 1 half, which is answer choice B. For this problem, we want the derivative of this little function here at x equals 1. So general derivative, we've got a derivative of 7x, which is just 7. Derivative of negative 3 is 0. Derivative of ln of x is going to be, let's see, plus 1 over x. And we just have to plug 1 into this. So that's going to be 7 plus 1 over 1. 7 plus 1 gives us 8, choice E. For this problem, I'm trying to take the derivative of x to the ln of x. Since I have a variable in the base and the exponent, and I can't simplify that away, I'm going to have to go ahead and use logarithmic differentiation. So I'll start by taking the log of both sides of this equation. That gives me ln of y on the left. On the right side, the ln of x is popping out. And I have another ln of x. This was the original, this ln, this x right here was the original base x that's now inside a logarithm. So I could use the product rule on the right side when I'm differentiating. Um, I'm actually just going to rewrite this, though, as ln of x, the whole thing squared. So that'll make a, a little bit faster of a process to take that derivative. And now let me implicitly differentiate from left to right. So derivative of ln of y, that's going to be 1 over y times dy over dx. On the right side here, I've got 2 times ln of x times the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x. And now I just have to isolate uh, dy over dx. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y. And I'll put this x down here in the denominator, so I've got 2 times the y. I still have an ln of x upstairs. Downstairs now I have the x that was the 1 over x. And let's see here. It looks like my answer choices, I don't have any y's in them. So this y, I'm going to have to replace that with the original function, y equals x to the ln of x. So when the dust settles, I've got 2 x to the ln of x times ln of x all over x. All this craziness. And is that one of the answer choices? It looks like answer choice C. For this problem, I'm trying to find the slope of the tangent line to ln of x over 2 
at x equals 4. Now, there's a few ways to do these problems. Um, if I've got ln of x over 2 and I want the derivative of that, I could do kind of like a little mini chain rule. Um, this time around, I chose to actually use my log rules and kind of split this up before I bother taking a derivative. Since I'm taking the log of two things that are being divided, I can actually split that up into ln of x minus ln of 2, because division turns into subtraction when you split up a log. And this is a much easier derivative to take now. This is going to be just 1 over x minus 0, because ln of 2 is a constant. Um, so just 1 over x then. I just have to plug in 4 at this point, so that is 1 fourth, which gives me answer choice B. On this problem, I'm given e to the f of x equals 1 plus x squared. I want f prime of x. So to uh, do this a little bit more efficiently, I'm going to try to get this f of x out of the exponent. Otherwise, I'm going to be differentiating implicitly, and that's going to be kind of a pain on this. Um, another reason I'm not just kind of going straight to imp diff on this is I notice I have x in all of my answer choices and no y's. So I want to try to get f of x by itself before I start differentiating, just because of the way the answer choices are formatted. So to get the f of x out of the exponent, I'm just going to take the ln of both sides. That's going to pop out the f of x. So we'll have f of x times the ln of e. But hold on a sec. The ln of e is just 1. Um, so really, we just have f of x equals ln of 1 plus x squared. All right, now I can just go ahead and take the derivative. I'm still going to need to use the chain rule on the right side here, though. So this is going to be derivative of ln of something. That's going to be 1 over the something, 1 over 1 plus x squared, times the derivative of the something. Derivative of 1 plus x squared is 2x. And since I only have a 1 up here in the numerator to begin with, and I'm multiplying by 2x, I'm just going to put that directly in the numerator. Can't really simplify this, so that's going to end up being answer choice B. For this problem, I'm given this crazy expression here, and I want the derivative of that at 1 comma 0. So I'm going to need some implicit differentiation on this, since y is a little bit of a beast to get by itself. So let me go ahead and uh, take some imp diff from left to right. On the left side, this y is going to become dy over dx. And on the right side, we've got 1 over something, 1 over x squared plus y squared. But now I have to multiply by the derivative of x squared plus y squared. And since I only have a 1 in the numerator here, I'm going to just put everything in the numerator that I would be multiplying by. So derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of y squared, that's going to be 2y times dy over dx, because we're differentiating implicitly. And what am I going to do at this point? Um, well, in order to get dy over dx by itself, I need to first get rid of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared plus y squared. That'll give me dy over dx times x squared. So x squared times that, plus y squared times this dy over dx equals all the stuff that was already on the right side of my equation. Um, but I'm actually going to move some things over to the left side now. So I'll subtract this 2y dy over dx, which I can't combine with anything here, and this uh, D, this 2x here, I'm going to leave that over on the right side because that doesn't have a dy over dx. Now, the reason I got all these dy over dx's together on the left side is I can now factor out a dy over dx. So that's going to leave me with x squared plus y squared minus 2y inside of parentheses. Now I can divide by that whole parentheses, so I'm going to put all of this under 2x. And now that I've got dy over dx by itself, I can go ahead and plug in the point 1 comma 0. So that's going to give me 2 times the x value 1 over, this is going to be 1 squared plus 0 squared minus 2 times 0. So when the dust settles then, we just have 2 over 1, which is going to just be 2. So answer choice D. This problem is, is a little bit tricky and weird. Um, we're trying to take the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over h ln of 2 plus h over 2. So on this one, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit to make it in a, a form that we're more familiar with. So I'm going to write this as limit as h approaches 0 of, and now I'm going to have something over h. So I'm going to have essentially this ln of this fraction over h. 
But since this is a log, I can actually rewrite division. And this is the key on this problem. I can rewrite this log expression as ln of 2 plus h minus ln of 2. Division is going to turn into to subtraction when I split up a log. And now if I write it in this format, this is actually the limit form of a derivative. We just need to figure out what the original function was and take its derivative at x equals 2, since I have a 2 instead of an x inside here. Um, so the original function is going to be whatever you have your x plus h inside of. That's the ln of x function in this case. Derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x. And specifically on this, we're plugging 2 in for x. So we just want 1 over 2 then for f prime of 2, which is going to give us answer choice c. On this problem, we're trying to take the limit as h approaches 0 of all this stuff. This is just the limit form of a derivative. The original function in this case is whatever the, the something plus h is being plugged into, so ln of x. Derivative of ln of x is going to be 1 over x. And the fact that 4 is being plugged in instead of x here is telling us they want f prime of 4. So that's just going to be 1 over 4, which is answer choice b. For this problem, I'm trying to take the derivative of f at x equals 1. Since this function has a, a variable in both the base and the exponent, I need to use logarithmic differentiation on this. So let me start by taking the ln of both sides to get the uh, x here out of the exponent. I'm going to have ln of y on the left side. On the right side, the 2 minus 3x pops out, and we have the ln of x squared plus 1. So let me go ahead and now take my derivative with respect to y, but I'm going to have to implicitly differentiate here. So on the left side, I've got 1 over y times dy over dx. On the right side, this is going to end up being a product rule. So, so I'm just going to start by writing a u prime v plus uv prime. Normally, I would just launch into my box and ribbon over here, but there, there's a lot going on in this problem, so I'm going to write it a little bit more abstractly and then do things. So now, uh, to get dy over dx by itself, I'm going to multiply y by whatever this product rule comes out to. And on the next few steps, I'm going to do a whole bunch of plugging in. Um, to evaluate this eventually at x equals 1, I need to know what the value of y is. So y is basically just f of 1. y is what I get when I plug 1 into the original function. So let me go ahead and do that now, because I know I'm going to need that value here. I guess I could replace all of this with uh, x squared plus 1 to the 2 minus 3x and then substitute 1 in, but, but why bother? Let's just find y now. So that's 1 squared plus 1, all raised to the 2 minus 3 times 1. Well, this is just 2 inside this parentheses. This is an exponent of negative 1, so 2 to the negative 1, or 1 half might be a little easier to work with. And now let me go ahead and find the value of u prime v plus uv prime at x equals 1. Let's start by getting kind of a general setup with the box and ribbon. So I've got factors of, let's see here, going back to the original, we have 2 minus 3x and ln of x squared plus 1. We're just doing a general product rule here, and then we're going to plug in x equals 1. Derivatives of these, we've got negative 3, and this is going to end up being 1 over x squared plus 1 times a tail of 2x, the derivative of x squared plus 1. Now if I plug x equals 1 into all of that, 2 minus 3 times 1 is going to be negative 1. Over here I've got ln of 1 squared plus 1, so ln of 2. Negative 3 is still negative 3. And here I've got 2 times 1 over 1 squared plus 1. That's actually just 2 over 2, which is just 1. Using the ribbon to put it all back together, and including this 1 half now, um, so now we're plugging into this dy over dx equals y times all this stuff. I've got dy over dx evaluated at 1. That's going to equal 1 half. And this is going to be, let's see here, u prime v, that's going to be negative 3 times ln of 2. Plus, we've got negative 1 times 1, so minus 1. To evaluate this and make it look like one of these answer choices, I'm going to have to resort to a little bit of trickery here. So first off, I'm going to factor out a negative to be with the 1 half. And I'm also, inside here, I'm going to pop in this 3 as an exponent on the 2. So I'll write this as ln of 2 cubed. And now I've got a plus 1, 
but I'm going to rewrite that as an LN expression as well because I see some of my answer choices have an LN in them. Um, so in order to combine this 1 with this LN, I need to convert this plus 1 into an LN. Plus 1 is really just the LN of E. Um, so that was a really tricky step right there, but I can rewrite 1 as LN of E. At this point now, I know that 2 to the third is 8, and I know that when I'm adding logs, I end up multiplying the things inside. So this is going to be in here LN of 8E, and I have a negative 1 half out in front of all that. So negative 1 half LN of 8E, that's going to be answer choice A when the dust settles on this one.